Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Writing the Game Servant for our MVC Guessing Game Example. In this video, we'll review the Guessing Game Example, the MVC version, and how the Game Servlet component fits in. Then you'll learn how to create a Java Servlet for an MVC application using the Eclipse software. A quick review of the guessing game shows that Craig, the Game Master, selects a secret number, presents the question to Nick, the player of games, guess a number between 0 and 1000. Nick will guess a number, Craig will respond that it's wrong and that Nick should guess lower or higher, depending on how the guess compares to the initial target. These guesses will continue until Nick gets it correct, in which case Craig will tell him that it's correct and how many guesses it took. Here's a diagram showing the components that we're going to use to make this game. The first component, index.jsp, will take care of initializing the game, setting the random target, and then presenting the form so that the player can make the first guess. Once the player makes the first guess, a request is sent to the server, and this is going to hit our game servlet component. The game servlet component will be concerned with comparing the guess to the target and determining the appropriate response. If the guess is incorrect, the game servlet will send execution to guess.jsp to handle the view for an incorrect guess. It will, this will display along with the form to make another guess. If the servlet determines that the guess is correct, then it will send execution on to correct.jsp to display the final results of the game. Along the way, any of these components can make use of our game number Java class. Here's a view of the flow of the game with some simple wireframes. Note that all these wireframes are going to be executed by our JSP components, so we won't be working on any of those with this video, which is concerned solely with the game's servlet. However, at least one aspect of the index.jsp or the guest.jsp is important to our servlet. That's the action of the form. We'll see in a moment that it's the action of the form that will send the request to our servlet that we're creating. Here we see what is known as an IPO table. An IPO table helps us to focus in on a component. In this case, we're going to see how the game servlet relates to the other components and exactly what it's going to do. The game servlet will be creating output, such as the target, guess, number of guesses, minimum and maximum, and a message pertaining to what happens next. This output will be sent to the destination. The destination is either going to be the guess.jsp or correct.jsp components. To create this output, it will receive input. The game servlet will get started when it gets a request from either index.jsp or guess.jsp, which will supply the input, the target, the guess, the number of guesses, and the minimum and maximum. To convert the inputs into outputs, we'll first need to get the input off the request object. We'll then do some processing to compare the guess with the target. Depending whether or not the guess is correct, we'll set the appropriate message We'll adjust the number of guesses if needed. We'll determine the correct destination, whether it's going to be guess.jsp or correct.jsp. And then we'll pass on execution to the next component. Here we are back in our Eclipse IDE. We can see, as we look at the Project Explorer, that the Guessing Game MVC version is a work in progress. We have already created packages for the controllers, a package for the model, and we've imported our game number Java class. And in our web content, we've already created index.jsp. If we bring our attention to the editor section of the IDE, we see that index.jsp is open, and it's scrolled down to view the form portion of the JSP file. Have a look at the action of the form tag. Notice that we entered our action as do guess. This means that when a submit event occurs on this form, the request is going to go to something called do guess. This is going to be important information when we create our servlet because we're going to need to connect this action do guess to our game servlet. Also notice in the form that we're using the method get. Keep in mind that we're probably going to change this to post later. So also when we create our servlet, we're going to need to allow for the do get and the do post methods of the servlet to receive the request. 
So two pieces of information to remember. The action is do guess, which will need to be mapped to our servlet. And the method is currently get, but we also want to allow a post. So with that information, let's get started. In the Project Explorer window, first right click on the controller's package, select new, and then servlet. We will very carefully go through these dialogs to create our servlet. The class name will be game servlet. Select next. Let's add a brief description. So far for this game we do not need initialization parameters. Let's now have a look at the URL mapping. A URL mapping is used by the web server to determine what URL will cause a particular component to execute. In this case, by default, our URL mapping is listed as game servlet. Recall on our form that the action of the form is do guess. So we would like to connect do guess to this servlet. We can do that in one of two ways. We can add it to the URL mappings or we can edit the existing one. This time, let's add another URL mapping. Click on Add, type in the slash. The slash is important because this maps it from the root of our application, which is the web content folder. Type in do, guess, and select OK. Now we see two possible mappings can get to the game servlet. A game servlet link or a do guess link. Let's click on Next. We'll just verify that we have the appropriate methods running in our do servlet when it's created. Primarily, we want to include both do post and do get. Once you've verified this, click on finish. If we look at the Project Explorer window, we now see that the game servlet.java class has been added under our controller's package. Let's look at the editor section now. I'm going to double click to expand it. A quick look at our game servlet shows that near the top we have the web servlet annotation. The web servlet annotation is key to our application. When the application is built on the server, it will note this annotation and it will be using it to help describe the servlet and to map any of the URL patterns that are located in this annotation. This servlet will run, as we can see, if a game servlet request is sent or a do guess request is sent to the server. As we scroll down, we also see that the do get and the do post methods have been included. With that, I think we are ready to begin coding. First thing I'm going to do is choose which of the methods are going to run upon a request. I'm going to test my application using get request, so I want the do get to run at least initially, but later I'm going to change my actions to post so that the data is not concatenated to the URL on request. So most of my code should actually go in the do post method. So to start, let's first edit do get to simply forward any request onto the do post method. We can do that with a simple call to do post with the request and response. Now most of our coding will take place in the do post. First thing we need to do is get the input. We have several pieces of data that are being sent along with this request. If you recall, we have our target, our guess, our number of guesses, our minimum, and maximum values. All of these are coming from the form on index.jsp, either from a visible text box or from hidden text boxes. In the servlet, we're going to need to use these as objects, so we'll store all of them as game numbers. So let's read them in order. First, I'll declare a game number called guess, request get parameter, and it's called guess. First, we see an error indicated for game number. If I hover over that, I see eight quick fixes available, the first of which is relevant to our servlet because we have not imported our game number from the model. So let's select that one. I can verify that it's been imported. Note that we have another error visible from our line. Recall that get parameters are always strings. 
but we're going to want to convert this to a game number. It's going to take us two steps because our game number constructor takes an int. So first I'm going to convert this to an int using a parse int method of the integer class. Then I need to call the constructor of game number. So at this point, we have retrieved our guess from the request. We've converted the string guess into an integer, and then we used it to create a new game number that we can use within this servlet. We're now going to do the same thing for the other four inputs. So I'm going to copy and then paste and edit for these lines. First target. Number of guesses. minimum and maximum. So now we've received our input. Next let's initialize a couple of important output that we're going to create. We're going to need a message that we can inject into the next page, whether or not the guess is correct or whether it's incorrect and the player should guess higher or lower. So let's create that message. We'll just initialize that as a blank string for now. We also need to determine whether or not execution is going to be passed on to correct.jsp or guess.jsp. So let's create that as a URL. I'm going to assume that the next destination will be guess.jsp, but I'll change that when the player gets the correct guess. Next, we need to process to determine which destination and what the message should be. To do that, I will compare the guess with the target. First, let's compare whether or not the target and the guess are equal. If guess dot get value equals target dot get value then we have a winner else we need to do next guess What happened if it's a winner? Well, first we need to set the message appropriately. So let's take message, set it equal to correct. You got it in so many guesses. And remember, we'll also need to go to correct.jsp. So let's adjust the URL to slash correct.jsp. I noted that my URL for guess.jsp needs an extra slash because we need to tell it to go to the root to find that file. Okay, I think for processing, we've done all we need to when they get it correct. However, if they get it incorrect, we're already going to guess.jsp for the URL. If it's incorrect, we need to increment the number of guesses. And then we need to determine whether or not the guess was high or low. So if guess.getValue is less than the target, meaning we guessed low, Otherwise, we guessed high. So if we guess low, we'll need to change our message to say incorrect guess 
guess. Higher next time. If it's high, we need to say for them to guess lower next time. Almost done with processing, but now we need to make sure that before we go to one of our views, we can pass on the particular values. To do that, we're going to add our values as what we call attributes to a request object. A request attribute is one of the ways that we can have data persist, at least from here to its next destination. As long as the request object is active, any attributes or parameters will remain on that request object. Attribute is similar to a parameter, but it's a little bit different. Recall a parameter always returns a data type of string. An attribute is added as an object and returned as an object. So let's see how it will work. Note, all of our numbers are game numbers, and the only other thing we need to add as output is the message. Keep in mind, all of our values are already parameters, so most of them we do not need to add as an attribute. Message is a new variable here in the servlet, so if we want to carry that on to the JSP, we'll need to add that as an attribute. In addition, we have changed the number of guesses, so we probably want to add that as an attribute for use on the next guess.jsp page. To create an attribute, use the request object dot set attribute. Keep in mind the difference between attribute and parameter. Let's simply call this one message. That's going to be the label that we'll call it as. And then we'll add the value, which is currently held in our local MSG variable. Let's set the number of guesses. Give it its label and its value. The final thing that we need to do on this servlet is then pass execution on to the next component in our application. So we're going to send control to the next component. To do this, we need a particular object called a request dispatcher. Call request dispatcher. For short, I'm going to call it dispatcher. Equals, we get this from the request object itself. So we're going to use a dot get request dispatcher. For the argument, we're going to enter the destination URL pattern. In our servlet, we have stored that in a variable called URL. Still need to import my request dispatcher, so I'll select it from the quick fixes. Now, what we have done so far is just simply set up our dispatcher object. We need to use it, and to do that, we call dispatcher.forward method, and we provide it with our request and our response object to pass along. So our servlet is complete. We obtained our inputs, we initialized some variables to use in our output, we processed the data to compare the guess with the target, we stored any new information on our request object as a set attribute, we set up a dispatcher to go to the next destination, and we forwarded the request object, which includes our parameters and attributes, and our response object so we can write to the appropriate destination. For more information about the concepts discussed in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy Production.